Hi, in this Simp Secrets, we're going to use Ableton Wavetable to show you the foundation elements of Sophie's brilliant, hyper-textured pop smash in material. Sophie might well have been a reclusive figure, at least at the start of her career, but Sophie's music was the opposite. The music created in a relatively short time frame was exquisitely produced and wonderfully original. If you're in the market for progressive, classy and crisp pop music, then you should look no further than Sophie. Sophie's most played song on Spotify is Immaterial. We dropped a link to the original tune below, but for now, here's a taste of the foundational elements that we're creating today. And here's a taste of it in the context of a tune. Before we start, please note we're going to be using only Ableton native plugins to recreate this sound. We're primarily using Wavetable, and this is a great bass patch to hold on to. It works in a ton of contexts, from pop to rap, from house to drum and bass. If you wish to follow along, there's a download link to the MIDI below, or simply freeze the video and program the part on the screen. One last intro thingy, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. We appreciate the support. Right, let's get to it. To begin with, set your BPM to 138. The bass drives this song and it's a deceptively complex sound. We'll recreate it starting with the lowest, deepest bits. Pull up an instance of Wavetable, stay in the basic shapes category and keep the table position at 0.0%. Then modify the amp envelope so the decay reads 275 milliseconds, the sustain is at minus 8 decibels and the release is at about 325 milliseconds. Set the voice mode to mono rather than a default poly and pump the volume up to 0.0, .0 decibels. Here's our progress so far. Our bass sound is nice but lacks impact. The same way you would add impact to an 808 or 909 kick you can add kick-like impact to a bass sound by modulating the oscillator's pitch with a snappy, short envelope. Select Envelope 2 in the Mod Sources tab, pull the attack, sustain and release to essentially zero and pull the decay down to 125 milliseconds. Then, move to the Matrix tab and give the pitch modulation an aggressive value in the Envelope 2 column. Something like 20 to 25 should do it. You should now feel the punch. Here's our progress so far. It's important with sub bass patches to keep it simple. The purest tones feel the punchiest, the most solid, the most centered. However, there's one additional modification this sound needs, and that's width. In many cases, just using the unison feature on any synthesizer is the best way to get a sense of width. However, that's not so with bass patches, because the unison function smears the lowest frequencies and decreases clarity and punchiness. That's where Ableton's chorus ensemble effect comes in. Drop an instance of chorus ensemble onto your track and engage the high pass filter on the bottom left, setting the frequency cutoff to 125Hz. Crank the amount knob to 75%. That high pass filter leaves the low frequencies untouched by the chorus ensemble effect, while taking anything above 125Hz and spreading it across the stereo field. Granted, there's not a lot of information here, above 125Hz, but even adding width to what little content is there really does liven up the whole sound. Here's our progress so far. A common trick for adding impact to bass sounds without muddying up the lowest harmonics is to mirror the sub bass with a punchy, maybe even distorted sound that follows the same notes as the sub, but focuses on the middle frequencies that really hit the body a bit higher up. Create a new instrument track with a fresh instance of Wavetable for our mid bass, and copy and paste a MIDI from our deep sub bass track over to it. Engage the sub oscillator with the sub button, boost the gain up to minus one decibels, and select a zero octave offset. For oscillator one, select the complex category and the kicked table. 
set the position to about 23%. Then move over to the Mod Sources section tab, select the Amp Envelope and change the Decay setting to about 330, sustain to nothing and release to about 275. Here's our second bass played with the channel on solo. Let's pull off some of the old tricks to add punch to the mid focus bass sound. Select envelope 2 in mod sources, move the decay to a very snappy 8 milliseconds and set sustain to 0%. Now move over to the mod matrix and apply this envelope to pitch at a value between 15 and 20. That will add the same punch we added to the sub bass. Here's our second bass progress so far played with the channel on solo. For our mid bass, we need some more interest. We use LFO1 to modulate the wavetable position on oscillator 1 and get things moving. Simply select LFO1, change the rate to about 1.75Hz, then map LFO1 to oscillator 1 position on the matrix at a value of about 20. And also engage the unison function by changing the drop down selection from none to classic. Change the unison amount to about 10% and the voice count to about 2. Now you should have a pretty apparent boost to your stereo width. Here's our second bass progress so far, played with the channel on solo. To make the sound really interesting, activate oscillator 2 and call up the beige wavetable from the collection category. Set position to about 21% and gain to about minus 7 decibels. This adds some nice harmonics that make the tone richer and more interesting. Then activate both filters, set one to high pass at about 5 kHz, with a resonant peak and another to low pass at 80 Hz. Finally, throw on some instants of drum bus with the default settings. Maybe add a tiny bit of crunch if you like. Here's our second bass progress so far, played with the channel on solo. Here's both bass parts played together. And here are both parts played together in the context of the overall song. If you like this tutorial, please drop a comment below with any suggestions of tracks you'd like us to try and recreate. If you'd rather follow along in text, you can do so on the tapmagazine.com. We've left a link below. Thank you and see you next time.